Amen. Take your Bibles this morning to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. That's A-C-T-S. That's not A-X. <laughs> Chapter 16. And we're going to deal with the most important question in the world. Somebody says, uh, how do we fix global warming? That doesn't even rise on the, that doesn't make the uh, important meter flicker. <laughs> well, what about the economy? Well, that's an important question, no doubt about that. And if you're having a bad time now, I don't know what you do, because it's at a, uh, our unemployment rates are, what, 50-year lows? But that's got to be pretty good. Well, what about, uh, what about the Middle East? Let me, let me give you what the Bible says about the Middle East. Wars and rumors of wars. And desolation is determined until the end, when Jesus shows up. So every time somebody talks about overtures of peace, uh, just forget it. It doesn't mean anything. If, it, if it's peace, it's only going to be for a little bit. Well, uh, what about politics? What about them? <laughs> if politics was any answer, once uh, Cain, by, uh, by a uh, force of rule, silenced his uh, politically incorrect opposition, that would be Abel. We've been in the same mess, and no politician's ever resolved uh, specifically one problem. You're still going to die. You're still going to get sick. Your teeth's still going to have... Uh, holes in them from uh, decay. Everything's still going to fall apart and you're still going to have a tough time making a living and getting by. Politics don't answer anything. You say, well, what in the world is the most important question? Well, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Acts chapter 16, verse uh, 25, if you'd read along with me from there. Now let's back up a little bit. Verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. The disciples. You know what they've been doing? They had the audacity to preach. They had the audacity to go in a public place and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the public uh, place was uh, no place for Jesus. They beat them. They uh, lied about them. They uh, arrested them. They uh, suborned perjurous men to uh, cook up stories. Sounds just like today, doesn't it? And the public wasn't any more interested in their souls or in Jesus Christ's claims over their life back then than they were today. So uh, the multitude rose up together against them, the disciples, and the magistrates rent off their clothes, stripped them, and commanded to beat them. Wow, what a bunch of gracious guys. In the name of democracy, of course. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Uh, they didn't buy AT&T and they weren't, uh, weren't uh, uh, purchasing Apple. The stocks were uh, where you were, you were uh, put in there and they locked your feet down so you couldn't move. Uh, they weren't just chains. They were, uh, those are fetters. They were stocks. You, you couldn't move from those things. So they're just in a bad way. But the story continues. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Hey, be quiet in there, you guys. We have our rights. You know, uh, you, we have the right to uh, not listen to you preach, not listen to you sing hymns. They didn't say that. Prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that his, uh, the prisoners had been fled. Uh, you may not be familiar with Roman law, but if you read the Bible, you would be. You get quite an education in that book. Uh, if a man was given a charge to keep prisoners and the prisoners escaped, his life went for theirs. If you remember when Jesus rose from the dead, the, uh, the uh, keepers uh, woke up from being uh, put to sleep 
went and told the, uh, the Jewish uh, hierarchy there, he's gone. And they paid them a lot of money to lie and said, if anything comes to this, we'll secure you. In other words, we'll cover for you whatever comes out of this. Just, just uh, don't, don't say anything. Say his disciples came and stole them. We'll, we'll, we'll make up a lie and it'll be good. Public will believe it. Uh, anyway, he, so he thinks he's, uh, he's a dead man. Verse 28, But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we, were all, we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Let's pray and ask the author of this very book, the only one in all of creation, who can save to the uttermost all that will come to God by him to take this to our hearts and our souls. Lord, we thank you again for your goodness. We thank you for the folks that are here, for visitors, for family, and pray, Lord, that you bless. Lord, just pray for Jason and his trip up here from Florida and the, the, uh, the funeral service for uh, his relative. Lord, that you'd uh, uh, poke people's hearts about their need to trust you before they arrive in the same state as that man whose ashes are being spread around today. And God, we just ask today that you'd be pleased to meet with us. Lord, lift our hearts and our eyes and our spirits above this world. Help us to see things eternally. Help us to see things as uh, from the viewpoint of the living God. God, in order to, to understand what is the most important question that will ever come to into a man's heart. Now, God, we just uh, pray that uh, you deal with this. And Lord, thank you for providing the answer in such a perfect, speedy, and full fashion. Lord, we thank you. Ask your blessings. Please bless our youngsters in Sunday school downstairs. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as we look through here, what must I do to be saved is the most important question. You say, well, I'm not interested. You may not be interested, but it still remains the most important question because it is a question that will plague you for eternity. There will never be a better answer. There will never be another answer. There will never be possibly a better day than today for you to ask that question and to uh, call upon the Lord Jesus to save you. There may be no other opportunity for you to do this. A couple of weeks ago, Brother Steve was... Uh, at work and he came in uh, that evening, a Wednesday evening, and one of the guys that had just started working where he did was going home from work early in the morning and was uh, killed in a head-on collision. He was killed. The fellow that hit him was killed in the collision. It wasn't his fault. He was completely innocent of that accident, but he's dead nevertheless. He will never have a chance to ask that question. And if he had not asked it before, the question is resolved. He didn't do anything. The devil has a default position, which most people fall into. Well, I'm not rejecting Jesus. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not the other. It isn't a matter of what you're not doing. It's a matter of what you do. Have you asked Jesus Christ, what must I do to be saved? As we ask that question, you got about uh, probably 40 minutes, 45 minutes to think it over while it's being asked. And at the end of the service, there'll be an invitation. And that invitation is not to take up money. That invitation is not so you can go home and say, boy, I feel much better about myself today. That invitation is for you to uh, be invited to uh, ask a question that has been either so long delayed or deferred. Let me uh, point out a couple things about this question. Number one, this man was fearful for his very life. Most people, uh, when they get saved, they are in a, uh, a sort of a dire situation. Uh, you often hear this, well, the, the reason they started going to church or the reason they got religion or the reason that they, uh, they started uh, doing that is because they, uh, they, were, they were scared of something. They had cancer or they did this or they were uh, waiting for a prison sentence or they were... Listen, do you put Band-Aids on your finger before you get cut or after? Do you go see a doctor before you need one or when you need one? The problem today is most people don't recognize the exceeding sinfulness of sin. So they don't look for an answer. They look for, well, how can I be a better person? How can I live my best life today? If you watch those TV quacks, you can live your best life today by being saved, but your best life is coming at the rapture when the Lord gets rid of this old stuff here that's really...